それでは早速、うん、と始めていきたいと思います。えっと、セッション1、プレビューオブニューフィーチャーズでベンさんにやっても、うんと、セッションの方していただきます。ベンさん、ベンさん。こんにちは、はい。よろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。Okay, can you share the screen? Yeah, one second. Can you see the screen now? Yep. Yes.、Oh, great. Okay, welcome everyone.、Um, I'm going to be doing my part in English,、uh, obviously.、Um, Today, I have only 30 minutes, so I'm going to go pretty fast. So, apologize for that, but、um, we'll cover quite a bit today.、Um, first of all, I just want to introduce our new 2020 official release.、Um, we released this in February.、Um, if you want to know all of the new features about this release, you can go to the What's New here and read an article that we posted、um, highlighting all of the new highlights of this release. So, we have a lot of point cloud work, instancing with TOPS, web client and web server DATs, as well as socket.io DAT, and a bunch of other things you can read about.、Um, <clears throat> as far as downloading、uh, the latest build, this build is 2020 22080, uh, and it was released、uh, about a week ago, so it's very new.、Um, I thought I'd also show、uh, there's a Interesting、uh, trick here. If you go down to the bottom and go to official downloads, you can find all of the builds that we have, all of the official builds.、Um, and for those of you that don't have、uh, Connect Azure and are on Windows, you can actually get a much smaller installer. It's only 500 megabytes instead of the full 800 megabytes. So if you want a quick download and smaller installer, you can grab it here. You can also go to the release notes from every single release directly. So, from here, we can re read the updates. So, you can see NDI, Video Stream up top, and NVIDIA Flex, which I'm going to go over today. And if you click downloads, it takes you to all the different、uh, downloadables right here installers. Okay, so one of the biggest、uh, additions of this version is that we allowed、uh, NDI in and NDI out tops to、uh, work in non commercial. So we now have NDI for everybody.、Um, NDI is usually used for computer to computer video and audio transfer、uh, across a network, either Ethernet or Wi Fi.、Um, so besides sending video just to another computer, there's actually a lot of cool things you can do with NDI. For streaming. And as we all know, a lot of people have been doing more streaming and online events in today's、uh, everyone staying at home scenario. So, what I'd like to do is show you a few different ways of how we can use NDI、um, for streaming today. So, here、um, I just have a few、uh, noise tops and some color adjustment into an NDI out top. In the NDI out top, you have a source name.、Um, this isn't new or anything, this is, but this is available in non commercial now as well. What is new for 2020 is you can also send audio over NDI. So、uh, you can drag the audio chop into this audio,、um, audio chop here、uh, parameter, and you'll now send audio with NDI as well. So let's look at a few different、uh, things you can do for streaming.、Um, Okay. So, OBS Studio,、uh, Open Broadcaster Software Studio,、um, is a free streaming tool and it allows you to stream your output directly to、uh, all the popular streaming sites like Twitch,、uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Um, screen grab is easy to do with it. it it'll grab your whole screen. But、uh, what if you want to directly stream your output here, not your whole screen? You just want a full HD output going into OBS. So, <clears throat> OBS Studio、uh, also has,、uh, for, from OBS Project,、uh, NDI integration with OBS Studio. 
So you can just you can find this by searching Google for OBS NDI or OBS Project NDI, and you'll find this. So I've already installed it, and I'm just going to open uh, OBS and show you here how you can get your stream in. So here, um, oh, it's already connected. I'll just delete that and start over. So we can add a new one here. And because I've added this NDI project, you'll now see NDI source in OBS. So I can select this, so let's say OK. And then in the source name here, down in the drop menu, we'll see all the different NDI streams I have going. So if I select this one here, you'll see that we now have the stream coming directly from Touch Designer into OBS. Now one trick is when you install the OBS project for NDI, you do need to restart your Windows computer, which uh, caught me out the first time. So make sure you redo a restart and then it'll be loaded into this. Another interesting tip about uh, Touch Designer when you're using um, when you're using OBS is in the preferences, if you go to edit preferences, there is an option here to stop playing when minimized. So normally if I was to minimize Touch Designer, I it would stop playing like this. But if I want it to keep playing, I can turn this off and I can save this, close it. And I can minimize Touch Designer and it will continue to work in the background when it's in the taskbar. So this way you can continue your stream while you're doing other work um, or while you're working with other programs. You don't have to keep Touch Designer um, uh, maximized. So I thought that was a, just an interesting tip that a lot of people haven't seen before. Okay, so the other thing you can do with NDI is, let me just maximize this again, is you can do camera effects with Touch Designer and get them into any sort of program like Slack, Skype, Zoom, YouTube, or whatever. So let's go up here and we'll create a video camera in. Okay, there I am, hello. Okay, that's working. Um, now, one thing about uh, Windows, I'm on Windows right now, is there's a few different libraries you can use. The Direct Show is the regular uh, default most compatible one. But if you use Direct Show, you don't get many features for the resolution. And this is only giving me a camera at 640 by 480. It's not very good. You can use Media Foundation and open up a lot more settings. So here, I can now use deinterlacing, other camera options or change the resolution to something higher because this camera is capable of a much higher than that. Okay, so now I have a 1280 by 720 at 30 frames a second. So let's just uh, just, just add a couple of effects here. I'm going to, um, well, flip it like this. Okay, now I'm mirrored. And uh, maybe I'll just get um, an effect from here. Okay. Let me turn this up a bit. Okay, this is just a GLSL effect I have. It sort of uses displacement on the camera. And uh, maybe I'll just zoom it in a little bit to get rid of that black. Okay. And now what we can do is use NDI for this as well. So um, what I'm going to do is drop down another NDI out. And I'm going to call this uh, cam out. Just give it a different name. Now, the trick to getting this into any of these other programs like Zoom, Slack, or Skype is to use on Windows, uh, I'll show you Mac later, on Windows is to use um, NDI tools. And NDI tools is available from NDI for download here. Uh, it's just ndi.tv slash tools. And for Windows, you'll notice there's this thing called NDI virtual input. 
And this takes an NDI stream and will turn it into a web camera stream or basically a virtual web camera. So <clears throat> I've already installed it. So you can see it here in my, in my applications. All I have to do is click it to start it running. Now that it's running, you do have to configure it a little bit. So if you go down to the taskbar, you'll see NDI virtual input is running in the taskbar. So if I right click on this, the first thing I can do is set the video to the right size. So this is a 1080p. Well, let's make my camera 1080p as well. Uh, do I have 1080p here? Yeah. Okay. And um, okay, let's go back to this. So I have 1080p and in here I can select any NDI stream I want. So let's select the one that I just created called Touch Designer Cam App. So now I can go to any of the applications you'd normally use. Um, like if I start video here in Zoom, my settings, and if I go to my video, I can select the NDI, New Tech NDI video, which is this virtual webcam. And it should work. Start video. There we go. So now I can stream like this, do whatever you want with this. You can be alter ego, streamer, no one knows who you are, and now you can release, do whatever you want. Get the lead in that. Cool. So this works with all other things like Slack, YouTube, anything that'll take a camera, Facebook, um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So on Mac OS, it's a little bit different. Um, but I'd like to show, I know there's a lot of Mac OS users out there, how we can do that. So I have this NDI here. Let me just zoom in. This is coming in from my, my Mac laptop. So let me just start it up. Okay. So I'm now sending NDI out from my, this is NDI out. And this is an NDI in looking at my Mac laptop. So I'm just going to show you how to do some things on Mac now. So OBS, um, let's just open up OBS on the Mac. So OBS does have an NDI option as well, the same option from OBS project that you can use. And um, if I turn this on, you'll see that I'm now capturing my screen. But the other thing that OBS on Mac does is it supports Siphon directly. So here I have, hi guys, I have my camera coming in again from my Mac to Edge. And I, I can now use Siphon on the Mac to go directly to, um, directly to OBS. So if I look at OBS, this is not on Windows, but it's, it's nice for Mac. Just go to Siphon Client, add a Siphon Client. And there we go. Now I can get it directly in. And the nice thing about Siphon is that because it's memory sharing, it doesn't have any latency or compression. Um, so it's a tiny bit better in quality. Um, the NDI is compressed, of course. So. Now, you'll notice that You'll notice that in NDI tools, let me just pull up the NDI tools again. The Mac, unfortunately, doesn't have the NDI virtual input. So to get camera effects into, um, or from Touch Designer into things like Zoom or Skype or uh, other applications, you have to do it a little bit differently. And uh, on the Mac, what you can do is use something called Cam Twist. Cam Twist is an application available um, well, it's available for free. I can just find it here. 
Tantrist Studio, it's called tantriststudio.com. And what it does is it takes it takes a siphon input and turns it into a camera. So it's sort of similar to the NDI virtual camera, but for siphon. So again, I have this uh, siphon spout out here. Um, let's just add another effect here. I'm going to add this time machine to it. Okay, so now I have a pretty weird, <clears throat> a pretty weird camera that I'm going to send out. And now any application that expects a webcam, such as Skype, for example, I can get it directly here just by selecting it in the camera. So Touch Designer can go out to all of these applications easily like that on the Mac. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out a bit, turned off the Mac for now. I have a Razer laptop, so you can hear the fans are really starting to work hard. Uh, sorry about that. So the next feature I want to show that's new to this latest build is um, <clears throat> RTMP streaming. We have, um, we've always had the video device out. Sorry, that's the wrong one. The video stream out. Video stream out. But previously, it only did RTSP. Um, now we've added an RTMP sender or server. Now, this will allow you to stream directly to any service that takes RTMP, uh, such as Twitch, uh, YouTube, Facebook. There's a bunch of them. Um, this feature is, however, only available in educational, commercial, or pro. It's not available in non-commercial. The other limitation of this feature is that it uses NVIDIA hardware encoding. So it does re rely on having a Windows laptop or a Windows workstation with an NVIDIA GPU in it because it uses the hardware encoders that NVIDIA offers to encode to H.264 in real time. So let me just show you a little bit about how this would work. Um, <clears throat> you basically have to set up your destination here in this parameter. So I will just go over to here to Twitch. So let me move this over a little bit. I uh, have gone, I'm going to use Twitch in this example here. And here we have stream.twitch.tv ingest. You can usually just Google RTMP ingest YouTube, RTMP ingest Twitch, RTMP ingest Facebook and find these, these values. But basically you'll take this URL and you will put it in the destination URL parameter. And the stream key is the unique identifier for your account. Um, so based on uh, your account settings, I'm going to go to um, my account of Twitch TV slash VR VoIP. All right, all you need to do is go to your creator dashboard. And in the creator dashboard, you can go down to your preferences channel. And you'll have you'll see, you'll find your stream key here. So just I can copy it in here, paste it in there, and the error went away because it started connecting. So now we can go back to my channel and see if it's working. Should be working. Aha, it's working. If I add audio to it, I can also stream out the audio over the same stream. Now there's usually about a eight to 15 second delay. Okay, right there that's changing the audio format. Now audio is coming in. Um, it's in my headphones. I'm sorry if you can't hear it right now, but the audio is working. So it's pretty easy uh, to get going. Um, that was just the Twitch example. For Facebook, you might go to facebook.com slash live slash create. And here, when you create a live stream, it will give you the same information, the same RTMP information and stream key. So down here, you'll see um, our server URL. Just paste that in. 
and copy the stream key. It usually takes a few seconds, but you can see it already picked it up, connecting live video. And there we go. We have a preview. And in Facebook to go live, you actually have to press the go live and do some other settings and you're streaming live from touch design. So it's pretty easy to get going. Uh, again, that's commercial, educational, or pro, and it needs an NVIDIA GPU on Windows. Oh, someone's saying hi. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's go back to, I think that's all I wanted to say about streaming. Um, I hope it's helpful for those of you that are experimenting with online events and uh, and want to get touch designer effects or output directly into your streams. So the next thing I want to show is our new, how much time do I have here? Okay, 15 minutes. Is our new um, Flex Solver. So this is also an NVIDIA uh, only SDK. Uh, it's called NVIDIA Flex. And it's basically a particle-based simulation system. Uh, it, can, it can simulate, let me just show it. It can simulate fluids um, or any other type of, let me just pull it up here. Okay. Here we go. NVIDIA Flex uh, is particle-based physics simulator. Um, uh, one, it has a lot of uh, new operators. So it has the NVIDIA Flex component uh, NVIDIA Flex top. And then it uses our actor comps and our force comps from uh, what we introduced with the bullet physics system. So it uses those components as well. Now I'm just going to go through all the different parts of this uh, very quickly just so you can see uh, some of the interactions and, and how they work. So what I've started with here is I added a little user interface that I'm gonna make a, a floating UI here. This is just a little button panel that I can have floating. Come on, oh, Windows, stop it. There we go. Just so I can easily uh, initialize and start it without always having to go back to these two parameters. And this is the Flex Solver component. It looks a little bit like the uh, bullet solver. It has a lot of the same features for starting and simulating and um, sample rate and sub steps. And then it has a page of properties which have to do with the particle simulation. Here, this actor, this actor component, what I have had to do is um, you have to make all the particles that you want to use. So here I've used um, a torus, just a simple torus here with uh, 100 rows and 80 columns. So we have 8,000 points. And I've used the actor comps instancing feature. I think a lot of you know instancing because we always teach it in beginner workshops. So you just set up a torus here as your positional operator and I've selected out the positions of all the points in the torus. So that gives me 8,000 of these little spheres. The spheres are defined inside the actor as a little tiny sphere sop. And quite simply, what we can do is just go to the, uh, the solver and initialize your simulation and press start. So I'll just press start and we get some particles. All right. Now, the reason it's hitting a floor here is I've created a boundary, this boundary, a plain boundary at minus three, so that if I turn this off, everything would just fall forever. So that's not very interesting. So what I've done is I've just put a floor down there. Okay. <clears throat> so um, that's one thing. You can take any SOP and use it as your instancer to create uh, points. Um, I'm going to show you just how I like to create a bunch of random points when I want a really big simulation or lots of numbers is I just use a pattern chop. And the pattern chop is nice because you can set in the length, you can set the exact number of particles you want. So I'm going to add 50,000 particles here. And I've created a channel for TX, TY, and TZ. So there's three channels, TX, TY, TZ. And I've just set them to random positions. 
So let's uh, use this pattern shop and set it up instead. So set it up, TX, TY, TZ for your instances, and then initialize. And you'll see I have this, this one by one square of 50,000 particles ready to go. All right, so it's a real easy way of making them. And here I can just uh, start the simulation again. All right, you can see I have a lot more particles, 50,000 to be exact. So other things you can do is um, let's go back to the flex solver and instead of just having them hit the floor like that, let's put a bounding box in them so we can keep all of these guys, all of these particles inside a bounding box and start playing with them. So I've created this uh, bounding box sop over here called uh, transform one, which is just a box sop. And I'm going to turn on the template flag so we can see it there. We can see it as an outline there. So initialize, you always want to initialize after making a change in the system. And then now we can see that I have a nice fluid simulation with all these points, 50,000. Now I'm running on a 1060, uh, GTX 1060 on this Razer. Um, so the number of points you can run at uh, really depends on your GPU. And um, I, I'm, I'm hitting 60 frames a second here without too much problem, but um, yeah. It will vary based on your computer. So the other thing I like doing with these boundary boxes is to sort of understand what these parameters do on the flex solver is you can move around this box and see how the liquid or the fluid behaves. So I'm just going to um, start rocking this box with an LFO. Let's, let's give it a bit more rock. Okay. So when I do this, I can, it's a really nice way of coming in and taking a look at what these different parameters do. So for example, cohesion, if I reduce this, you can see they really start falling apart and they're all individual. Whereas if I crank it up, I get a very thick fluid or something that wants to stick together. All right. Um, also, I'll loosen that off a bit. All right. You can also then see what things like damping does. You know, damping is kind of slows it down. It lets it start, but it slows it down very quickly. So I'm getting unique little waves here, rolling waves. Another thing that to be aware of is this max acceleration is clamped at 100. Um, if that's turned off, sometimes you'll get particles hitting each other very quickly and bouncing around really fast. So that's on by default. I'm not getting any right now, but you'll see that often. Also buoyancy. Buoyancy is how much it sort of floats once it's been hit. You'll see the buoyancy really affects how much they go up. All right. And with buoyancy high, I can turn up damping quite a bit and you'll see it slows down their reaction. So I, I like to have my particles moving when I'm trying to understand what all these parameters do. Okay, I'll just give this a bit of cohesion again. And uh, maybe I'll turn off, I'll turn off the, uh, the box moving. Okay. Now another nice way of looking at how these things react or what these parameters do is actually to get rid of the gravity on it. So let's just remove the gravity, which is on the first page to zero. And I'm going to initialize it and then start the simulation. So right now, because of my cohesion, they all stick together. But if I put zero cohesion, they start falling apart. So you can understand what cohesion does a bit more there. Um, we could also crank up things like now, if I do it, it brings them into these really weird shapes like that. Right. Or if I start out with um, a lot of surface tension and start the, over again, you'll see how they stick to the walls a bit more. And with a bit of cohesion, they, sh they form different shapes with the surface tension on it, more on the edges. So I think buoyancy is also quite interesting here. I'll turn this down. Uh, maybe it doesn't do so much here. 
but you can get some really odd shapes, really cool stuff when you have no gravity. Put gravity back on at minus 9.8 and we're back on Earth. All right. So another uh, thing you can do here, how much time do I have? All right, I have another six minutes, so I'm going to have to speed up here. Sorry about that. Is colliders. Colliders are just actors uh, using the actor component. And uh, I'm going to turn on these here. I'll turn them on. And then I have to make them both active. And to make them a collider, you need to set them to static infinite mass. All right. So now that I've added them, let's start over and uh, let's see if we'll start. Now you can see that they're colliding with those guys. All right. I also have an example here of a moving collider. Um, so if I turn this on and reinitialize, so maybe I'll turn these guys off now. And I'll start moving this. So I can sort of move my particles around. <clears throat> now, one thing to be careful of here is if you have the max acceleration on here, you won't be able to move them very quickly. Um, so sometimes you might want to turn that off for uh, better behavior here. Or you might want to turn this very high, like uh, 500, so that you can move move them quickly if you want to increase the speed of this. OK. And um, next up, next up, I'd like to show force fields. So I'll just turn off this. OK, here we go. So here I have some force fields here, and these are using the force comps. Now, uh, the force fields, force is for the bullet solver, and the force fields are for the new flex solver. So let's turn these guys on. I made some little uh, spheres to represent them, and I'll make them a bit smaller. OK. And what I'll do is I'll turn them on. OK. Actually, let me just turn on the first one here. Okay, I'll turn that one off. So the first thing you will notice is that with a negative number, it sucks them into it. It sucks things into the force field. And with a positive number, oh wait, sorry, this is the wrong one over here. With a positive number, it pushes them away. So what I can do here is maybe I'll crank up the strength and increase the radius and you can see I'm, I can push them sort of push them away and it creates sort of a barrier where the particles can't go all right I can move these around anywhere I want whatever And it basically pushes everything out. All right. So that's sort of interesting. Um, now, what I do like doing, I'm going to turn on the other one. I do like sort of having a tug of war between these guys. So we can suck all these particles up. And depending on how strong it is, you can suck more or less. If I let it go softly like that. You'll see it just tries to get them, but doesn't quite hold them all up. You can also try linear fall off, which allows the force to fall off towards the outside. So <clears throat> if I made this a little smaller, you can see how the force drops off. Maybe this one will be more obvious. And I'm going to turn up the cohesion a bit to slow these guys down. There we go. Now this one here, if I turn off linear fall off, doesn't do much. Let's go over here. 
That one's going to keep sucking them in with linear fall off off. So the other thing I like doing is actually making them quite large and having a tug of war with these guys. This is kind of fun. If we make them overlap a bit. And then you can control the strength and kind of suck them between each back and forth. Let me do this one here. You can get some really interesting stuff like this. It almost looks like it's pulling apart a star or something. You turn off these. And you can start feeding one from the other, which is really cool too. Just based on the strength, you can sort of fight between them. Okay. And I'm almost out of time, so I just want to show one last example. Um, sorry for going over. I'm going to turn these off, these force fields. And instead of this actor here, I'm going to show you the other type of actors we have. Um, yeah, other type of, we only have one other type, but um, let me turn this actor off and turn it off from rendering and turn on this one. And this one is uh, an emitter fluid. So it's not just a fluid, it's an emitter. So let's, you can see now that it's actually emitting. It works a little differently. You set the maximum number of particles and then it will uh, use up to that many. So you can sort of, you can look at this info chop that's connected to the solver and see how many particles are actually there. It's 28,000 counting up to 50,000. And of course you can do stuff like introduce your colliders again. And you can do stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> um, this is the speed of the emission. And the emitter size and the number of particles. You can turn it on and off with the toggle. And the last little bit of uh, information is this, this flex top here. Um, this flex top looks at an actor. So if I turn off this guy, turn off the emitter and turn on this one. Okay, that's not. Let me just use this guy again. Okay, there we go. Back to this one. Okay, so we have all these particles going nuts like that. And if I, in the flex top, I specify this actor, I will get all the information in um, a flex, in a top. So this is on the GPU and you can use this information for um, anything from instancing to starting to do tops effects on it. Um, it also works with all our other point cloud tools that we introduced in 2020. So um, I'm actually suffering from a slowdown right now, which I've seen when going in between regular fluid actors and emitter actors. So um, I'll have to report that because you'll see it's much slower than normal. Um, and I can't seem to get it back. But uh, if I restart this file, it'll work fine. So just a little bug that we have to work out. Um, I think that's all I want to show because I've gone a few minutes over. So um, I hope you enjoyed this little quick preview of, of what we have here. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach me on Touch Designer's Twitter or uh, my own personal Twitter at VR Floyd. So I'd be happy to answer any. So I think that's it, you can saw. Thank you, Vincent. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Wait.
はい。とじゃあ、ベンさんありがとうございました。次、えっと、トッティさんのセッションに移るんですけど、トッティさん、Please tell me when you're ready to presentation. あと1分準備するって言ってるのでちょっと休憩です。I can show more flex. <laughs> <laughs> show more flex. It's good. <laughs> okay, please switch my screen. Okay.、Uh, tell me when you're ready.、Uh, you just say hello, okay? okay? I just want to show that last part that broke.、Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I restarted this file because it was acting poorly.、Um, okay, cool. And then I'll change this back to the bounding box. Okay, great. So, what I was trying to show there when it slowed down on me was this、uh, flex top, which is the information from this actor.、Um, so, let me just hold on. This over here. You'll see when I simulate, this flex is actually getting the position. Of all of the points. I could make another flex top here, and if I wanted to look at the velocity of all of the points. So, right now they're not moving, so there's no data, but you can see once they start moving, you get the velocity and tops of all the points. And it's 50,000 pixels or more、uh, because I have 50,000 points. Okay. And you can use this for all sorts of effects.、Um, You can feed it into shaders or you can use it for instancing. So, for example, here I have a geometry and I'm going to render it. So, inside the geometry, I'm using a sphere or a box. Let me just、uh, hone that. Hone that. Okay.、Um, and I can instance anything there. If you want rubber duckies, you could, you could do rubber duckies there. So, if I turn on this. There's a rendered view, and I'm feeding it from this using our new、uh, GPU instancing from TOPS. So now, if I go in here and switch, I can switch it to cubes, and I get these.、Um, wait, let me turn off this. Now I get these cubes being rendered, so it's more like a, looks like voxels in a way. So. So it's sort of interesting.、Um, here, I'll turn off this. We don't need this actor viewing anymore because we're rendering it. And from there, you can start, you can start putting、uh, materials on or whatever you want to do. So, okay. Do you still find guys have ready? Ready? Okay, I'm, I'm ready to stop. So thank you again. <laughs> Bye. <-bye. Yeah. laughs> okay. Totti san, Jim san, can you hear me? Thank you.
I'm very appreciate of this opportunity to introduce uh, Digital Fund and uh, TEA community to everybody today. All right, um, first, very welcome to our virtual studio today here. Uh, this is our studio in Mars. All right, just kidding. But yeah, you know, because of the virus, um, uh, a lot of people start their um, interviews or presentations online. And then we produce this virtual studio, you know, like here um, in Shanghai, actually. Yeah. And all right, uh, I'm Toti from Shanghai, and um, uh, my company is called Digital Fund. Probably some of you have ever uh, heard of the name because uh, we do have a, ha had an exhibition with TDSW uh, yeah, one, how, how many months, like last September. So it's very glad to uh, meet you guys here today again. And yeah, please enjoy this all of the uh, presentations. All right, so this is the, all right, every, hello everybody, <laughs> yeah. And this is logo for logos. And this is the, uh, some introduction very briefly. Well, Digital Fund is an uh, interdisciplinary uh, art and design studio. You know, we focus on uh, immersive design and experiential initial design. We produce like uh, the services for uh, our car companies, um, our um, uh, like different brands to make different events for different people. And I would like to show you the demo real first. Understanding of us. And that's the, some of the reels we've done uh, for the past years. In the past years, we um, design uh, different like the shows, especially uh, for the, those like you can see like the car, uh, the, the sports brands, and also other uh, different brands. And what we do, so we have four different sections. One is the, uh, we design of the strategy, you know, before we start really design something and start working on the development of the system, we provide a reference, we provide some ideas, like initial ideas for our clients. So what we're gonna do and different options. Also, and then if they pick up you know, specific um, ideas, we will keep continuing uh, working on the research part. We will research on both art and also design and also the technology. So we are not like a hardware company. We are uh, uh, like a technology and design studio. So 
we provide different um, uh, solutions, you know, like the art design technology, how to do this and how, uh, what the hardware we're gonna do. So we rent the, the hardware if needed. And in the end, we implement the whole system. Like we go to the on-site, you know, like the the stadiums, the um, the like the the, the uh, where wherever the the events will happen. So we start working on really like set up the camera and working on the kinetic lighting systems like that very, very details and subtle uh, stuff. And then the, those are the clients and um, uh, some brands we've uh, searched for. So from the car, that's what we really started to uh, the sports brand and also the watch, the Audemars Pickens and also Lululemons. And also we do the um, C-Graph uh, VR theater. We create the uh, panorama videos for them uh, in that theater. If you, if anybody you got a chance to um, Los Angeles last year, so you will see that. Okay, and okay. The next, I will introduce some of the. I think there were some interesting. Uh, cases to to you if you have any uh, questions or if you have any like thoughts interests you can talk to us later later and th this is the one we um did um let me see like almost two years ago one and a half years ago uh, in Hainan Island this is the Audi eight AAL uh, launch and th that's the first time we use touch designer to control the kinetic lighting uh, systems. All right, so let's see what's happened there. impressive at that moment and because um, that's the you know that show involves not just uh, kinetic lighting it involves uh, oops. it involves the uh, tracking real-time tracking system it calls black tracks if you somebody heard about it before and also the notch system so everything on the ground is real-time rendering and we provide the technical support for the kinetic lighting before that, they used the matrix, you know, matrix system, but uh, uh, you know, the movement, the lighting is not that flexible as touch touch designer could do. It, could do. So we use touch designer that makes the show, you know, uh, different from the similar shows, uh, previous similar shows. So after that, that's why after that, a lot of a lot of like kinetic systems were applied. Uh, in Chinese like car launch after this show. So it's a very typical one. And touch designer is like amazing, you know. It's the first time people start knowing, okay, touch designers are like a, like a in, very incredible system could be used in such a big shows. 
And then after that, we use the tech designer do like the, some laser shows. This is a performance we do uh, during the, uh, um, the, the Flair International uh, Art Exhibition in China. We will talk about it later. But this is a, like a performance we did using lasers and notch for real time rendering. So we use the lasers, uh, you know, it looks like the laser is going on the projection, but actually that's a not uh, rendering. Um, they share the same data from the CJ, so we don't know what the image look, will look like before we really start the DJs and uh, the music. The music, um, how did you to analyze the, uh, the music? We can tap from the DJ and sending out the data to NUT and the laser system. You know, everything else like that. There's like an ether thing, uh, like laser tap. You know. So we use those to uh, sync the notch and lasers together to make such a show. I think it's touch designer, the, the most like a uh, capability of touch designer is it, it can sync, you know, different software and um, uh, hardware together to make it like a whole whole show. It's not just like lasers, you know, before that's lasers, laser, uh, rendering videos, video, sound is sound, which is not flexible, you know. People have to, you know, communicate to each other. It's very hard, but with touch designer, it's like much easier, you know, like a central command. Okay, and this is some uh, image of that show. And there's another one we use lasers and uh, visuals. So we, we also use notch. So I think um, like one year before, that's where we uh, met Yuki san in China. We talk about the notch and touch. Notch is another like very incredible, incredible um, program could be uh, used for making like very interesting like images, especially a real time, very fast rendering. And we use that for this show as well. one we did for the um, that show the car show okay right so 
um, besides those like the indoor shows, we do the outdoor shows. Outdoor shows is like kind of different because it, it's hard to control everything, especially the smog, right? When you, if you use the lasers, you need a smog, right? The smog is like making the laser beams visible, but outdoors is very, it, it's hard to make like enough smog in such a, a space. And we do, we did like, uh, um, we did using the lasers for the Volkswagen show on the, the last year, the December of last year, and using the bamboos and the, um, the LED. So the initial idea is uh, just the lighting the bamboo. We thought that that's like kind of boring, right? It's, 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 it's at, the, at the entrance. It should be like a very um, amazing show because it's the first sight the audience will see, not just lighting the space. It, it doesn't make sense. So uh, we propose the idea of using you know, lighting, the bamboos, and using lasers to make the show. And you, you, you will see that there's a, the four, um, the car light. Okay. That's the request by the client. So we're gonna use the, the light, the, the front light of the, uh, the car, okay, in this show. Okay, so we need to control the laser. We need to control the LED on the bamboo. We, use, we need to control the front light of the car. So how to do that? So that's why I think the designer make Okay, can do anything, you know, just combine everything, whatever you want, I'm gonna use. So this is the, what we did. The lasers. All the lasers will reflect on the small mirror. Those are lasers, and uh, on the each of the bamboo, there's a uh, hundreds of uh, small mirrors. Only six, no, only twelve laser machines on the ground. So it's just like the um, the, the the horizontal uh, laser. So touch the the first uh, the first mirrors and reflect the second one, the third one, the fourth one. So there are different levels of the mirror so it's a level one level two level three so each uh, mirror has its group okay the level one mirror has its like shape like this the level two mirror reflects like this so different levels of the mirrors reflect the different image to make a 3d three-dimensional uh, image laser image in such a space and there's a interesting thing is because we need a smog like, like i said right so we need a smog machine working like all the time and there's some guys outside this area you know like um, 500 meters away thought that it was on fire so they called the, the police say okay there's fire there and and the police called us so what happened here and actually we're just using the smoke machine so there's some some, you know, uh, um, stories, you know, funny stories during uh, this show. Okay. And those are some, uh, I think the cases, just three, but I think very typical cases I would like to share with you guys. And, all right, so after that, that's the digital fund. So digital fund is our commercial studio. And on the other side, we do have the uh, uh, educational department called TEA. TEA is, okay, T is not T, nothing to do with T, but it's short for technology, okay, education and art. So we had a, a that's a Chinese com community, you know, um, providing the uh, new media education um, for the like both art and technology. 
because my background is engineering when I was uh, in a university, but I was, I, uh, I went to the, uh, I went to USA for my master of fine art degree. This makes me like think about how to combine the art and technology together. So that's the initial, you know, um, thoughts to make the TEA happen, TEA community, in new media community happens uh, last, last year. So uh, under the, uh, the TEA community, there are two uh, community, sub-community we call it. like one is the touch designer one, which everybody knows. And there's another one is the notch VFX. So in a both community, we have the online um, mm, tutorials, we have the online books, we have everything, resources in Chinese. I think it's quite important for most Chinese people because you know, there's uh, like some VPN stuff and there's some like uh, uh, translations, uh, dif uh, difficulties. We need like Chinese version of everything. So that's how we did for uh, of the users in China in the past few years. And aside from the um, online resources, we do have like some uh, offline uh, events like what TDSW did, but it's, you know, it's not as big as the TDSW uh, had in Japan. But I think it's interesting because we found a lot of people in China uh, very feel very interested in such an area, but have no resources or have no way to learn new uh, skills. So we provide the WeChat groups. Okay, WeChat it's uh, it's a line, you know, it's like the line app you use in Japan, but in China that's the WeChat WeChat ones. So uh, they are more than 1,000 people currently in uh, touch designer groups talking about the tech, the tech, the ideas, the design every day in such a platform. And also we provide, okay, here, all right, the touch designer uh, books. You know, uh, there is another one in Japan written by Shuhei Sam and right here. Camera, camera, sir. All right, here. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the books in Chinese uh, introducing touch designer and also the it's like a tutorial based uh, for the hardware part, for the uh, protocol part, for the um, visual part, and for the like the data part. Okay, I'll put this. Oops. And then we provide uh, touch designer trainings um, for the different uh, materials or anyone who would like to join us. So it's not just uh, talking about the theory. We do have a real like projection mappings. We have like uh, uh, hardware, especially the, the stage lightings and also the Arduinos, LEDs, you know, uh, different, um, hardware available for people to uh, practice. And some events we had, you know, presentations in universities and colleges. And yeah, I think that's the, that's Ben, right? Okay, that's not, no, I think they're wrong. That's the uh, Canadian uh, study groups. I put the wrong one, but whatever. Um, the, sorry, Ben. And that's the, the some, uh, events uh, we would like to share. So all is like non-profits, it's all for free, but when uh, the college invite us, we will very like to, to go and share our experience with students. And the, the last year, there is another big thing, is the FLAIR, the International New Media Art Festival in Shanghai. And that's the first time we collaborate with uh, Japan, uh, Japanese TDSW. That's Oops, yeah. That's the uh, one shot of the, the, for, the touch design forum. So in this um, 
festivals we provide, uh, you know, it's not just exhibition, it's exhibition plus uh, touch designer forums, plus workshop, plus performance, DJ performance, sun, it's a, like Saturday performance. That's a, that laser shows we, I just show you, that's a part of the, the performance. So in the, we are trying to make this like annual uh, festival in the next following years, we got a lot of help from our sponsors. I think that's why we feel very lucky or we feel very um, happy to join such uh, big festivals because you know, it's like, a, uh, it needs the, the space, it needs the hardware, projectors, everything. But uh, a lot of friends uh, uh, sponsor our, us and also, you know, uh, KDSW, uh, help a lot in these events, you know, to, without TDSW, it, it won't happen. So it's like a, between Japan and China, that's the first time, but that's a very typical one, you know, you know, uh, the past September. I will show some pictures uh, during that one. That's the touch designer uh, forum. So everybody know there is a, uh, every year in um, Canada, or I don't know what is the next one, but Last year in Montreal, uh, the Touch Designer Forum is like global one. And this is, we want to make, uh, make it like uh, uh, Asia for more Asia based one. So uh, people, especially in China, Japan, and maybe next time uh, more countries in Asia will join us to show their uh, research, you know, whatever the academic research. Uh, uh, commercial cases and also like, uh, you know, some technology development and new skills. I think that's the very good way for people to uh, exchange the new ideas and technologies in such a platform. So that's why I think there's not many such an event in China. I think that's, we're trying to make the best and make our best to make it happen every year. And TDSW made a, an e, a video um, last, yeah, okay. a video for the show. We can take a look at that.
this is the experience, uh, exhibition part. Um, there are five different projects exhibited in a uh, exhibition center. It's, uh, I think it's like 1,000 square meters center. And robot this is a robotic that and with a notch on the screen, so it's like a real time um, rendering system. And also the uh, the robotic, the movement of the robot is real time. And also we have the form Unfortunately, we have only one day of the day, half day, half day, half day, half day, half day. For the people there, I wish we had more space, but I think most people in China using touch design are no band. And this is the uh, performance. We invited like Hicks, um, Hats Pixels and Kafuka from Japan to present the first one. Very exciting ones. And that's the one I just showed. Another group from China. Yeah, thanks uh, TDSW for this video. So that's why I think what we did, you know, as a digital fund and a TEA community, community for what we for you know for of the the whole Chinese community, we want to provide more. Uh, fancy shows as well as the more education part. So if uh, that's all of the, uh, my presentations, if you have any interest, uh, could you zoom in? So there is a, we have four different websites on the right side and the email address. So I would love to um, know and hear about of any of the thoughts and suggestions. Um, so Please let us know if, if you have any thoughts. And this year we're gonna have the second, if the virus is gone, uh, the second uh, New Media Art Festivals in China. So anybody, uh, if you get, any, get a chance, you're very welcome to China and join us. And thank you very much. And I'm Toddy, thank you. Thank you, Toddy-san. Okay. Uh, last five minutes, give me some time to introduce about next TDS of you. Hi, etto, no kori sampun yonfun nan desu kedo, etto, jikai no TDS of you no shirase sase te kudasai. Etto, konsu no kin yobi ni, chotto namae mada. ありなんですけど、日本時間19時から20時で、えっと、講師を2人お呼びしました。えっと、ワンテンの
しているので、ぜひこちらも参加してもらえると嬉しいです。えっと、チケットの方は PTX から2、3日以内にまた公開します。はい。じゃあ、ありがとうございましたって感じなんですけど。Thank you for joining TDS over today. We want to invite touch designer users and plan Plan online session like today. So, if you have interesting news or information, or if you want to be a presenter, please contact us casually. And if you want to join TD survey workshop like this,、uh, you can get tickets from PTX. So, I'm glad you follow TD survey these accounts. Hi, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 えっと、前回同様テクニカルサポートでヒューズさんがお手伝いしてくれました1時間半っていう時間,だ時間で、えっと、2人のセッションしていただいたんですけどまたこういうのを、えっと、海外からプレゼンターの方を呼んでやっていけたら面白いなと思ってますそれではタッチデザイナーサンデーウェビナーにご参加いただきありがとうございましたバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバ